Hello and welcome back to the Exlu Magazine YouTube platform. As ever, I'm your host Jack um, and today you're joining us for what is a rather impromptu look back over some recent Mandalorian uh, action figure news um, going back all the way to the beginning of October. As I say, a little bit impromptu, not um, so well thought out. We thought, why the hell not, obviously, to celebrate um, Season 2 debuting this past Friday. And it's quite a big subject, so I'm not in, I'm not by myself here. I roped in um, a good friend of mine, Scott Bliant. Here he is. Hey, Scott. How's Hello, it going? everybody. Okay? I'm good. Hey, how are you, Jack? I'm good. I'm well. I am excited just to kind of run through. Um, we're just going to find our feet on this, make up as we go along if we have to. But there is a ton to um, talk about, really. So let's bring that in so everyone um, watching can see. We're doing this the old dirty way. We're just going to click through onto our Instagram page. Um, and we're going to start off with the reveal of the My Show movie realization Ronin um, Mandalorian figure that you can see here. Um, so, Scott, what do you think about this? What were your first thoughts when you saw this well, news break? Personally, I like, I really, I'm sure like most things Mandalorian these days, uh, pretty excited about this one. Um, yeah. I've, I've been a big fan of uh, this line of figures. Um, I mean, I have a couple of them, and I've always found them to be one very interesting to uh, to you know to look at. I mean, it's just an interesting line. Yeah. This one, though, is like I mean, if you look at the details, I mean, it's pretty incredible. Like the helmet, the rivets, and the helmet. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Just like the texturing on the figure. Are, are pretty remarkable. Um, I guess if I had like one complaint, um, I, 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 I'm not a big fan of the gun, uh, like his rifle. It oh, almost, okay. well, it almost looks look. too Mandalorian to me. Um, I, it's, uh, it, yeah, it, I think I know. What you I mean, with it, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to articulate. Yeah, it's it. It doesn't seem to take me to. It seems like. It's basically here's the Mandalorian. We kind of get jazzed it up a little bit, and yeah. here's a figure rather than like now. Here's this alternate history, um, this alternate yeah. world, and there's the Mandalorian that exists in that. If that makes sense. Um, yeah. Th yeah. That no, being I, I, said, yeah, I absolutely I, I love the figure, but I, that I think if that there was a complaint, that's the one I have. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, Again, I think on some of these figures, as you say, some are stronger when it comes to, you know, um, bringing us closer to the kind of feudal Japan aesthetic than others. Um, I think they always get the blasters quite well, the actual pistols yeah. that you can see here. Um, but yeah, I think maybe you're right with the rifle there. Perhaps it isn't um, as stylized as it could be. Um, like you say, it, it does maintain a lot of its kind of on-screen look, I suppose. But yeah, across the board, I, I think it's fantastic. Um, Again, whenever I see something, or whenever I see a figure of him in his default armor, I always think to myself, well, surely that means we're going to get a Beskar or a gotcha. Season 3 yeah. version down the line. So maybe that's what they'll go for here. Um, don't forget, obviously, they did do that with Bobber. We had the normal Bobber, and then they brought us the all-white prototype version as a con exclusive. So, you know, they could do it here. Obviously, different tooling on this one, but, you know, I, I think there's potential for that to happen. Um, I will say, so, like, Bobber is kind of like the the... That's kind of the, the the peak, the pinnacle. I mean that that's the one that I think all the other ones have try, been trying to kind of get back to. I mean yeah, that's such yeah. an incredible looking figure. Um, yeah, but I mean yeah, this one yeah. is in a class of its own too. I mean, like when you look at that series, this one does stand out. Um, I was one hundred percent. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's an image as well which we'll get to because I only posted it a few days ago, and this reveal we we covered it back on October eighth. Um, so there is a more recent image that um, Bluefin Brands in the States on your side of the pond posted up um, to give us a kind of better look away from this kind of, you know, promo-esque style. Um, so let's jump ship and let's say goodbye to the realization figure. And just whilst we're here, just whilst it's in view, um, just very quickly, we can have a little look here um, at the Death Watch Mandalorian, of course. Uh, no spoilers here. This is from the end of the first season. Um, again, October 8th. So you can see the beginning of October was a, seems to be quite a busy period. Um, now, I'm not a Hot Toys collector. That comes from a budgetary point of view. Um, yeah. I wish I could add some to my collection, and I you know, I fully intend to. I really want to add a couple of bobbers to my bobber shelf. 
But I think this guy, in terms of just his looks, you know, is fantastic. Um, were you surprised to see Hot Toys pick this guy out? Well, I guess not. I mean, they've really you, – you see Hot Toys coming out with a lot of uh, Star Wars figures lately. I mean, from yeah. um, especially like – I mean, I, I, may, I guess it's a hot property, obviously. But, I mean, you get Ahsoka, you're getting Rex, you're getting like the – the clone trooper orange helmet um, look, yep. you're getting a Cody coming out. And so like, you know, man, Mandalorian, you have, um, I, they just started with the flex payments on um, the scout trooper speeder bike. Oh, nice. Nice. Um, yeah. So that'll be, now that that's a pricey one. So you're probably talking, I think early 2021, yeah. um, but you see them really putting a lot of resources into that. I mean, there's the, um, I think they, they were, they're bringing out like the general Kenobi one, I think. And I know they're bringing out a new Anakin. Yeah. So yeah, that was revealed at the summer showcase. Yeah. And what I think what was like the, the new, uh, is it the shock trooper? The one with the flamethrower that they're, uh, they're bringing out uh, that, oh, that the incinerator trooper as the well. incinerator trooper. So you can yep. see that they're really putting a lot of resources into star Wars and now particularly, um, the Mandalorian. And I say good. I mean this. I mean this figure itself looks incredible. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think it looks fantastic. Yeah. I, I again. I think a topic for another kind of conversation as well is to go into. I, I think Hot Toys and the wider toy industry. I think maybe they felt a little bit um, of a drop off when it came to interest, particularly around Rise of Skywalker. Regardless of what you may think yeah. of, you know, the sequels. I think from a merchandise point of view, they started very strong. Obviously, the Black Series launched alongside Force Awakens. Um, but I think there has been that gradual decline in figures from those films. And so for Hot Toys to now have a property in their hands, such as Mandalorian, which is critically well-received, um, fans love it. Um, it's very toyetic. You know, it has all those characters that people want on their shelves. Oh, hold on. So, Should I write that term down, toyetic? Toyetic, mate. I've heard I'm it somewhere. I know it's a I'm good one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, you know, I, I mean, people who you know are familiar with our page, especially on Instagram, where you know we're we're drawing from this video. It, you just look here. You just take this grid here. Um, you know, two out of that nine aren't Mandalorian based, and that's not from a bias. That's purely from us getting a read on what's hot. You know, at that yeah. time. So even you know, just kind of going back from our standpoint here, um, and looking at the uh, general giant. Bust. So this is their one six scale um, bust, obviously of the Beskar Mandalorian, which was then um, shipping out as well. You can see here they are numbered. I'm not entirely sure how well you can see that at home if you're watching. No, that. I see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah so two thousand nine hundred. Um, so again, whether they're statues, action figures, and really whatever price range, there's something there for everybody. Uh, I mean, we spoke this before we started recording. Um, just hold up the camera so everyone can see. Um, we spoke a little bit about this guy. Um, the Disney Toy Box figure, um, who also comes, you know, with the child here as well. So, regardless of price point, I mean, these are kind of your entry level, I suppose. You know, ten pounds here in the UK. Um, the Mandalorian has it all. It, it's ticking all of those boxes. Um, and again, I don't know if you have any particular thoughts about this one. Was this on your list to pick up? Was this something that perhaps you passed over? Well, I initially passed on the pre-order um, for the Hasbro version, um, but when I got in the uh, Figure Arts Beskar Mando, I immediately yep. went and um, from Hobby Ginkai, um, I will say, um, yep. went to them. I pre-ordered um, the armor from the Figure Arts line. Right, um, yep. Although I have been seeing shots come in on Instagram with this, and I mean, they do. I, it looks really good. And yeah, yeah. I haven't had one in hand to kind of like you know to look at it and play with it. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I don't. I can't speak like intelligently about this figure. Um, I am excited about the figure arts one, but I mean, it does. It it it's another one that just you know. It looks nice. I, I I still always kind of wonder, like, how – I mean, it, from a collection standpoint, uh, point of view, it's really great. Like, from yeah. – like, wh where I come in, like, when I want to, like, photograph them, I don't know how many opportunities I'm going to have or I would want 
yeah. to like have a forge and have like someone beating up stormtroopers. Although, I mean, I, I, I can certainly see the appeal. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I mean that's the thing, isn't it? Again, it's I, I think it's one of the great things about the community and about what we do is that these figures kind of have a different meaning, a different life sure. for everyone that engages with them. You know, for me, uh, you can kind of see in the background here um, of the image and how well you see it. But you know, I, I kind of I'm a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to black series and collecting. I keep some figures in box, um, and others I'm more than happy to take out if they're on blister back. So uh, or card pack, you know, such as the credit collection IG11 here. Um, I won't ever take anything off the cardboard. Um, and same as this one here, because this is a con exclusive. The same with Rex, the same with the First Order Trooper they've done. There's the Jin so there's the quite a lot when you think about it. There's the Grand Animal Thrawn, there's the Luke Speeder. So quite a lot of these convention exclusive Black Series, you know, I, I don't take out of the packaging. I, I, I leave them, you know, because I think the packaging is part of the product oh, that's, sure, how sure, I, sure. that's how i collect them um yeah again um i think it looks great i kind of really wanted to get it so i jumped on it as soon as i could the only thing i think is a little bit funny i don't know how well you can see it again um without taking out of the box you can't really see it but it's that kind of um material on the back which is her kind of it's not really a cape it's not really a covering but you know it's just that patch of kind of fur almost that she has oh, okay, okay. on her back obviously with the standard hasbro release it is a hard plastic or uh, i guess a soft sculpt plastic whereas on this exclusive version it is actually material it, it looks like some really weird wig they've just cut up in the factory and stuck it on her back so it's, it's a little like bit a, odd there's there's one troopers from the solo where they have the white fur it, on the See, back now, yeah. on those guys on the range troopers i think they pull it off because it kind of has a bit i don't know what it is it the material in that sense i think is better which is a very ambiguous word better what does that mean <laughs> um i think it's better though than the material here but like i said you know i was really happy to kind of add that to the collection um so what else have we got to have a look at here uh, you can kind of just make out just very briefly a little pit stop um you know, the child in the background here um, was part of the Hot Toys um, event at the New York Sideshow Comic-Con. Um, and again, this, inter this picture here is quite interesting. So um, this is actually um, the original concept drawing of that My Show oh, wow. okay. um, movie, uh, Mandalorian. I can just bring up my phone to kind of read the caption because I can't do that on, on here, which is kind of annoying. Um, so let's try and get that up on my phone. Yeah, so it's by um, Takayuki Takei, which I really hope I got his name right. So he's the artist um, which who who's responsible, let's say, for bringing you know that feudal Japanese style and mash, mashing it up with you know pop culture characters that we love. Um, so again, it, it's that kind of stuff I really love. I'd love to have that as a print as well. I think that's just really cool. No, really that's cool incredible. You know, and that I mean, the figure. I know this is probably so because I mean the rifle pretty much is iconic. I mean it it goes with the Mandalorian. Yeah. I mean, but like I would love to have seen like a spear or um just some kind of like range weapon with yeah. him for some reason. I the, you know, they had the one archer, they had uh the one with the kind of Gatling gun, just yep. something like like kind of pops a little more stands out and i hate to keep harping back on that and complaining um but for a hundred dollar figure i mean that's pretty pricey um, i yeah i i i that's I'm, not I'm there cheap. With you, yeah and it, so, no, it really I, isn't it really isn't when you compare as well what's out there yeah you know, in that in, in that field you know you're in figure arts mafex kind of territory you know at that price point um so I mean, obviously they have the sword, the katana, which they have, you know, on all but these. But that's releases. pretty standard. That's, I mean, that's yeah, kind of standard the with on all these of them. figures. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. So, yeah, I, I, I do agree. I think they, they could have perhaps pushed the boat out a little bit, kind of taken a bit more liberty. But again, you know, we're kind of commentating on that. We have no idea the limitations from Disney, which is yeah. imposed. So, you know, we can only. And you, like I said, like the like when you think of like the Mandalorian, you think of his pistol. Yep. And you think of that rifle, you know, I yep. mean, those are both associated with him. Um, so I'm not saying like replace perhaps as an add on or. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, definitely. It's an so, add -on, yeah. 
I don't know. But like I, I mean it looks like it has like the darts down at the bottom. Yeah, so there's, like, there's a few blazes again, I think. Um that didn't yeah. come through, did it? I didn't is that with the figure? Well they normally attach either to I think it's like the upper thigh or the arms, okay. if I remember rightly. I'm looking over here because I've got my Bobber and Django over there, but they're kind of obscured. But I, I think that's how it's done. Um okay. so I don't think you see them so much in the promotional images, but they are I think they're just like attached to the figure. Um so what else have we got? So again, yeah, here we go. This is just a few more images uh, of what we've already spoken oh, about. Yeah. And, cool. you know, it looks fantastic. At the end of the day, I think the end of the day, I, and I said this the other day to the missus when we were watching uh, Mandalorian, I think you almost have to remind yourself that five years ago, there was none of this. There was, you know, you had Django, you had Boba who was, you know, out of the picture. Um, and now all of a sudden you've kind of thanks to the Clone Wars, you know, um, show and how they've really kind of pushed those guys, a siege of Mandalore, particularly season seven. Um, yes. and also, you know, rebels as well with, with Sabine and her whole family backstory. And now Mandalorian himself, naturally the type, you know, the, the titular character and everything else around him. If you were a Boba collector, like I've always been, or a Django collector, all of a sudden the floodgates have just opened and there's now all these other variants of the same, yeah. the same design, the same character. So, I mean, this is fantastic. And again, whilst I'd love to have a Boba, I'd love to have this guy because, again, you know, it's it's in that same vein. Um, yeah, well, that's a dangerous so, road. You start going down the the one six scale. Well, this is the um, thing again from a budgetary point of view. Um, you know, I, I kind of stick firmly to my Black Series generally. But I do pick up anything Bounty Hunter. So, you know, Lego, Gentle Giant. I've got Funko all the random stuff um but this is something quite interesting now although yes you can see it here if you are watching this is the diamond select star wars select um boba fett which at the time that i'd done this post on, uh, on uh, october 12th it was only now kind of um being revealed it wasn't an official reveal at the time um uh, we will talk about it later on in the video when i actually get to the official images we can kind of see it a bit more clearly um but obviously, I didn't want to skip over that without um, just mentioning it there. Um, so obviously, a lot of McFarlane stuff on our feed. Um, so not strictly Mandalorian, but I mean, I can't, you know, uh, East Django, I, I can't not talk about him. Um, <laughs> what do you make of that sculpt, though? Where where are you with that sculpt? I've got a video here to play. Yeah, here we go. Where are you with um, this sculpt, do you think? Well, I the, honestly... I don't know you can see. There's the trouble in it. Well, the first thing, like from the last image that you saw, that was the one thing that kind of struck me. Up. Up yeah. That, I mean, that looks really good. Yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah. And, I, and I, if I sound surprised, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. This is the first I've seen of this. Oh, so wow. this, this <laughs> okay. Is like, it's like, hey, you know, here we are. Um, so, like, I, I guess this, like, passed me by completely. Um, You'd be forgiven. This has just been a deluge recently of oh news, hasn't it? Especially Mandalorian based or you know, Star Wars. Something else. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly that. And that's 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 the first thing that struck me. Now, obviously, we'd seen this guy with the helmet on through the summer showcase, yeah. um, and we kind of knew it was coming. Um, I think we had also seen actually the uh, kind of the, the sculpt out on display, but to kind of get it, you know, in, in this promotional gallery on October sixteenth. Um, it's crazy how time fly. I can't believe we're talking about that. Like, you know, that was weeks ago now. You know, um, it's, it's funny. It's like sometimes, like these skulls can be hit or miss. You know, yeah, every once in a while, yeah. especially like with hot toys, it's um, you'll get one where you're just like at because they they always have a habit, and I I, I don't know why. Um, I wish they wouldn't do this. Um, it, they did it with like uh, like the sideshow, like the Jack Burton uh, Wonder Woman has it where they they kind of open the mouth just slightly, right. Where in the wrong lighting, it makes them look confused. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, I follow. Yeah, and like so, it's like everyone's why it just drives me completely nuts. Now, yeah. like they they nailed it with the John Wick, um, and like I'm looking at this, and I'm like, man, this just really looks incredible. Um, because yeah. like cause every once in a while, you'll just, like I know like when I I have like especially I look at like the Jack Burton one, um. 
you know, I just look at it. And I was like, why does he look like he's completely confused and has no idea what's going on right now? <laughs> yeah. It's just the way the light hits it. And it's, he's, he's got his mouth slightly, you know, parted. And it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then that, that, that's the thing. And it? he says little nuances in the sculpt, which can kind of make or break it. Um, so again, for anyone watching, if you want to have a closer look, you know, please do head over to our Instagram, which you can see here throughout this video at excludemagazine.com. We have got a little video here. Um, of images um, put back to back um, from the Hot Toys art director, um, the, the production art director, I should say, um, JC Hong. You may be familiar with him. He often shares these kind of behind the scenes looks. So do check that out for a closer look at that Tamura Morrison sculpt, which is fantastic. And again, I won't dwell on it too long here. Um, we've got a lot to get through. But again, here is a nice little comparison I put together just to kind of show you their sculpt for Rex um, and Cody, um, oh, which again, I think. I don't want to dwell on it, but just really quickly, one statement to make about it. I think um, Hot Toys could almost have been given a pass for using the same sculpt and just changing the hair on these guys. But actually what they've done is go that extra distance. Um, I'm sure they probably all use the, you know, the same starting block and tweak slightly. But just the fact that you know Rex is different to Django, is different to Cody as well. You know, I, I think that that really does kind of um, speak a lot about the care which has gone into these Clone Wars figures. Um, I feel like this entire conversation um, this afternoon is going to cost me a lot of money um, because I already well, have X on pre-order. But man, now all of a sudden I'm thinking like Django and, and you know the Death Watch and yeah, yeah, no yeah. Much. This is the thing. There's so much. Um, Again, I, I probably will skip this one here, only on the basis of you can't see that too well um, in the format that we are recording today. Um, let's see what else we've got. So um, the IG-11. So this here um, is an image um, which came our way courtesy um, of uh, Hobby Genki. Um, so obviously, if you follow us on Instagram, you know that we do a lot of work with those guys. And Actually, a little caveat I can drop now. We are going to be giving away the Avengers Endgame Hulk SH figure arts with those guys in the coming right. weeks. So if you're not already on our Instagram, you know, now's the time to follow. So make sure you're in good stead when we go live with that. Now I know, Scott, you are of course um, a big figure arts um, fan, big figure arts collector. Have you got this guy in hand? Oh, uh, you know what? Like this is one Oh, I set you up there. I set you I, up you, for you, you to say yes. Up. Like I wish. I wish. I, I right. went out to pre order and um I pre-ordered late. I, I, I right. really pre-ordered late. And I, well, I went to pre-order late. And then, because I was all in my, I have way too much. I need to slow down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, after I was like, well, let's, let's, let's calm down here and like, uh, or let's get, you know, spend some money. Who cares? Whatever. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where I'm going with this, but all I'm saying is I, I missed the boat on this one. Um, I wish I, because this is an exclusive. This is like a Tamashi. Um, yeah, it was a Soul project, Web so. um, exclusive or whatever that, you know, the official wording of that is. Yeah. Yeah. So this one's not coming back. There's no, no. you know, they're not going to re release this. The price is only going to go up. And he really does look nice. Um, but like, I, I think like my issue with IG 11, and it's really just like the IGs anyway, is that from, I always feel like I'm going to break them. And, Okay. Okay. When it comes to figure arts, because like I the bat I, I got the um the battle droids from you know the clone right. Okay. Droids. Yeah. Yeah. Those things were extremely brittle. Right. Oh, okay. I mean, maybe not break break, but like the arms are always popping off, and I just kind of had visions of those when I when I saw this, like with the yeah. spindly arms. Um, although he, and he does look nice, but you know. For me, it was just like, you know what? I have the Black Series one, and that's good enough. And that is the thing, yeah. I mean, I um, I don't want to break your heart, but yeah, I, I was lucky enough to kind of get this sent our way. Oh, um, nice. to see of Hobby Genki, you know, as part, as part of our review and as part of, you know, our kind of relationship with those guys. So it kind of afforded me the opportunity to kind of get hands-on with a figure, which, yeah, I, again, normally would be outside of my budget, I suppose, is outside of the realms of what I collect. Um I do have fig arts. I do have a few Star Wars ones. I have the Shore Trooper and the Hover Tank pilot, both from Rogue One, which I adore. Um, I've got uh, a New Hope layer as well, you know, the classic white robe. Sure. Um, so, 
and I've, I've got the best car Mando and Child as well. Um, again from Harvey Genki. So um, it afforded me the opportunity to kind of get hands on with this guy. I think it's fantastic. I think there might be a slight issue with scaling. Um, I think I've got an image on our feed which we can get to. Yeah, I do. I can see on my phone. We can get to that then. Um, let's quickly jump across that now, actually, just so we can keep the conversation on this figure. And I will just remember to kind of dart, dart back a little bit. Here we go. So, yeah. So here we go. So again, hopefully you can see that well at home. Not entirely sure. Let me see if I can enlarge it somewhat so you can see i don't really enlarge it it just moves it but anyway so yeah i'm just trying to enlarge it and it just moves it so oh well um yeah you, you can see here this was my initial hiccup with it when i posed it on the shelf with the best car mando and child it struck me just how big he is now i know there's you know there i wouldn't say discontent that's quite a strong word but there is some kind of issue i think with the Mandalorian, the base one. People always say the helmet is too small. People always say there's issues there with the body proportions. So I think it's kind of half of one, half dozen of the other. I think IG is a bit too big, and I think Mando's proportions are a bit off, which makes him appear smaller. Um, but you can see here just how much taller he is. Wow, that, um, there's a huge discrepancy right there. So that, for me, I've got like a little Mandalorian shelf where I've got all my... My best car Mando is the armor. I've got all the bits and pieces of the heavy Mando. And I originally wanted to have, you know, this kind of set up, you know, where they're next to each other. But you just can't do it, I don't think, because every time I glance at it, I think, my God, he looks so big. But focusing on the figure just independently is fantastic. The sculpt is on point. The articulation is on point. The, you know, the amount of detail that they've managed to kind of work into that guy is brilliant. The accessories are there. The only thing I really have to say about it is the harness that you can see there, the bandolier. Mm -hmm. um, it just needs to sit a little tighter to the body. It's, it's, there's a little bit of a gap between that and the body, so it kind of feels like it's floating a little bit, almost like a, like a life jacket, if it makes sense. You know, when you're yeah. swimming, it just seems a little bit kind of big. Um, but no, apart from that, a lot of love for the figure. Um, if you are watching and you have this guy, um, do let us know your thoughts on it, particularly on how well he scales with the Mando here. Um, like I said, I think he's kind of a little bit, not a deal breaker, but it's definitely something to kind of think about if you are looking to pose them together. Um, so let's return um, again, just to kind of see it in packaging here. So this is the um, Diamond Select Toys 7-inch Star Wars Select Boba Fett. Now, there is also a Darth Maul as well. Um, this guy retails for $24.99 in the States, and I think it's around $19.99 here in the UK. They are both available. So if you have a local Disney store uh, and it's safe for you to do so, you know, feel free to kind of check it out. Um, now, I don't know how much or what's the better way to word that? Um yeah, how much interaction do you have, I suppose, with Diamond Select figures? Do you have many Marvel Marvel Select figures at all? I have, I mean, I've had a few Diamond Select. Yeah. Um, I don't have many. Like, the ones I'm really familiar with are, like, uh, the Nightmare um, Before Christmas, kind of like yeah, Jack Skellington yeah. ones. Yeah, uh, they're pretty sweet. And, I mean, they've always looked nice. Um, I will say that it's like that's the one thing. Well, for the most part, I've seen some. Well, this is the thing they've got the sculpt from General Giant, haven't they? Particularly, you know, in their newer releases. So I know, I know that this one. Um, actually, I, I think we can actually have an even closer look at um, the sculpting on this guy in a minute. Actually, um, yeah, we can. Let's just jump to that. Um, I've got my phone in front of me with Instagram as well, so I can kind of see what's ahead. Here we are. This is this is what I wanted to bring you to. So this is the same figure. It's still the Diamond Select one, but you can just kind of get a better flavor of the articulation and how he looks out, out of the box. Now, I will say these images um, did come our way courtesy of Unparalleled Universe as well. Okay. So, you know, full credit goes to him for these images. But it just gives you an idea there of some of the articulation, some of the sculpts, which is carried out by General Giant. Um, obviously, those two, you know, have a relationship um, with each other. Um, I again, mean, that's pretty good. Uh, oh, yeah. Again, sculpt-wise, like you said, looks fantastic. Um, I know I've, I've spoken to Trevor, uh, one six shooter for those of you who are watching. Um, and when it comes to diamond select, they seem to nail sculpt fairly often, perhaps not faces, but I mean, faces are kind of hit and miss across the board with anyone, but when it's helmets, you know, troopers, Mandalorians, whatever it might be, they seem to nail it. They're just very solid. You know, they're very 
chunky well, yeah, they don't figures. Want to yeah, they don't want that to that works in their favor. I mean, I just reach over. Um, so I've got here. Um, let's see if I can bring it up so people can see what it is I'm holding up. So yes, yeah, so here you know their um, their Thanos here from a few years ago, which was also Disney Store exclusive. Now, when you're talking about a chunky figure, if the character is chunky, it works perfectly. You know, it works so well here with this guy. Um, now I'm going to pick up the bobber, but I am thinking to myself, you know, how chunky is he? How restricting is that going to be in the articulation? Um, it's hard to judge, always hard to judge from images how the articulation is going to go without I mean, having it in hand. But, but what bad. do you think? I mean, you look at the way the arms, uh, like how he's got the arms posed. I mean, that's not insignificant. No, true, true. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's a pretty – now, obviously it doesn't – I mean, I can't – you know, you can't really see from a picture, but it doesn't look like the thighs are moving, you know uh, – you're, you know, you're not turning those. It doesn't look like, I mean, maybe you can, but I think they not... probably have that upper, like upper thigh cut, if that makes sense, gotcha. where you just swivel outside of the joint itself. And the knee is it like, is that just like one point of movement right there rather than like the multi point that you, some, you'll get like with Hasbro and yeah, it looks to be uh, one continuous yeah. wall joint, which yeah, flexes round. Um, so I, that doesn't look bad. And like for $24, um, I mean, that is the thing. So, it's, yeah, I mean, with how Black Series pricing is, obviously, I know Black Series and has uh, and Marvel Legends have been kind of creeping up, haven't they? I think yeah. somewhat around twenty and kind of getting a little bit higher. So, Most in terms of twenty four, twenty five dollars. Well, this is the thing. So, in terms of what this figure is competing against, you know, it, it's kind of you know, it's kind of there, isn't it? It's kind of on point. Um, so, what else we got to? Oh man, how do we skip past this? Right, okay, let's try to touch on the basics of the Hasbro news. Now, I will just say we will do another video, um, hopefully this later this week, going more in-depth about the head sculpt. Um, so we're not going to dive too far into that right now. We're just going to cover the actual basic news elements of the week. So, you know, we're going to start here with the speeder bike and child, of course, from, you know, the kind of penultimate episodes uh, of season one. Um, now, this is due to arrive late 2020. It's an Amazon exclusive. You may already know that if you have pre-ordered it. And it carries a list price of $49.99 USD and also £50 as well here in the UK because I have pre-ordered it on our Amazon. Um, what do you make of this? Something that you're looking to pick up perhaps? Well, I did. I pre-ordered. Oh, awesome. uh, now, I have... Uh, I had to, you know, I have two speeder bikes, you know, with the scout troopers, and I love the scout troopers. I think yeah. those are probably, if not for like the sand trooper, probably my favorite stormtrooper mold. Um, yeah. they, they stand well, they articulate well, and they just look good. Yeah. Um, and this is, I mean, this is pretty cool. And like to get a speeder bike now, like even like on the secondary market, it's it, it gets pretty pricey because you know people, you know, they they really can kind of charge it. Oh yeah, and, you know, yeah, the original ones, yeah. I think I bought mine on the secondary, and it was more than it was more than this, unfortunately. Um, right. So this is kind of a nice ad. It looks pretty good. Um, I'm sure like, you know, part of that too is kind of the hype of the trailer that they brought out where they had the speeder bikes kind of going over. Um, True. So, it's, yeah, so you, you kind of got that season one aspect and also, you know, season two um, seems to be, you know, uh, employing the vehicles all over again through the trailers, as you say. So, so um, I, mean, it's pretty yeah. I mean, standard other than like a paint job. I, I don't know if they like did any other mods to it. Um the yeah. artwork on it looks really good, though. I, I do yeah, like again, that's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I was then drawn to as well when I was looking. Yeah, that looks really cool. Um, again, yeah, I love it. I think I think the only difference is perhaps some of the weathering, you know, with the kind of mud here and behind and kind of um, on front and on the little veins here as well. Um, but yeah, I think you are right. I think apart from that, it is the same mold as the original Return of the Jedi version. But yeah, you know, you are looking at paying whatever, you know, whatever the going rate is for those guys. I don't know. Um, but and I would say penny. The, the new Scout Trooper, um, as opposed to the older ones, um, I have one of the new ones when they re-released them, I guess, on the card back. Um, yeah. It, oh, yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it's, and it's, you can't have too many. Personally, I don't think you can have too many of these guys. Oh, uh, no, no. 
uh, like nor regular stormtroopers and like the and the scout troopers, you know, fill up your collection because uh, yeah. it, it's a great figure, and you you, know, um, you can definitely go out to uh, the, the woods and take a lot of pictures of those guys. So. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. There's there's a lot of potential in there from a photography point of view as well um, with what you can kind of achieve with those guys. So nice to see it. Nice for those of us who've missed out on the return of the Jedi versions. Um, perhaps, you know, I think it's easy, easy to forget that so many black series collectors have come on in the last few years. And that original kind of speeder bike release was way back when, you know, right at the very beginning of everything. So, um, so yeah, that's, um, as I say, retailing for, for 49.99 on Amazon, um, jumping across from the Scout Trooper over to the new, um, what was being talked about as the build-up pack for the Mandalorian. Um, I know Yakface were reporting that um, before this went live. So yes, this is a new uh, Mandalorian um, Dinger in there, um, Beskar armor version and child pack. Um, retails for $34.99. Um, again, late 2020 expected. Um and unfortunately, for those of you who aren't fans of it, um, exclusive to Target. Uh, I will just say as well, for anyone watching this side of the pond here in the UK, um, you probably know this by now already, it is exclusive to Smith's as well. Um, you may have been lucky enough to order this at £20, like I was. It then sold out. It was then relisted for thirty-four ninety-nine, which seems to be the actual going rate for oh. it. Now, I haven't received an email yet to say we made a pricing error. We're not going to honor it. You need to, you know, you need to kind of pay the rest of the money. So uh, maybe we're going to get away with it. I don't know. Um, time will tell. But let's take a little look. So, do you have the first Beskar release? I series? do. I yeah. do. I have like put the uh, figure arts and the Black Series one. Uh, right. And I also have, you know, the Black Series Child. So this set to me honestly i'm not like i'm not impressed with this set um i'm not i think it's kind of a if, if there's a term you could apply to it as like a big fail um yeah. i just don't understand like why one they made this an exclusive um the mandalorian is difficult enough to find and store anyway and then like like isolating it to like one particular these target exclusives just drive me crazy don't get me started yeah. um but this in, in particular i this is going to be a path i mean i guess maybe if i ran into it i i might pick it up but other than that just not not excited. yeah no i hear you know i think that kind of echoes a lot of sentiments doesn't it from people i mean you've got people who perhaps aren't fond of the fact that yes it is a target exclusive you've got people who like me have both the best car Mandalorian and the child anyway from Hasbro. Um, now, yes, I did jump on this. That's purely because I think as collectors, we are irrational and we do weird yeah. stuff with our money. Um, so I had to have it just to have with my other Mandalorian figures. But yeah, I completely understand the argument of, well, was this a necessary release as an exclusive? Because, you know, okay, what are you getting? Well, you get in the crib, you're getting some of the extra ingots of best guy you get a little track and fob um but like you say the child you've already got the head sculpt which again i don't want to get bogged down on this video but the head sculpt here which you can just kind of see um just very briefly again it's not that kind of head sculpt which sells itself and you think oh wow now i get it now i understand why it's exclusive you know it's a bit of an odd one so yeah i i hear you 100 percent um so as we say here just for those of you watching at home again exclusive to smith's here in the UK. Um, a little bit of a transition, sticking with Mandalorian, but something a little bit different. I don't know if this is up your street, down your street, or whatever other analogy you want to use. Um, but for me, I am a huge um, gamer. I've been, I have my Xbox account now, I think 14 years. So I'm firmly in that camp. So I'm sure we've now turned off half the audience um, <laughs> if we haven't already. Well, um, guys, so maybe we'll, uh, we'll, we'll bring them back. Yeah, hopefully we'll bring them back. <laughs> um is this up your street i don't have an xbox so this one really doesn't speak to me um right now if they came out with like a playstation one i don't know if i would like rush out to buy it 
but it, it I mean, it definitely looks cool. It, well, it, yeah, it, yeah, and that's the thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, the last big Star Wars collaboration with Xbox, I don't know if you remember, was the R2-D2 and C-3PO 360 console, which came with Star Wars Connect. Um, now, I know Star Wars Connect is something which people don't like to bring up because it was a bit of an abomination. We had dancing Han Solo and dancing Boba Fett out of that game. Um, but the actual console itself, the R2-D2-themed Xbox and the C-3PO controller was fantastic. So when I saw this, I thought, oh, yes, like... That was years ago. I can now get another Star Wars related, you know, peripheral, another controller. And then I looked at the price. So for those who may have missed this, um, $169.99 USD, $159.99 pounds here in the UK. Controller. And the reason is, is this little um, part here at the bottom, which is um, like a little charging dock as well. So... I think a lot of the value is in this that you can just pop that on the little charging dock and you know charge away. Um, again, at home, I don't know how well you can see this. If you want to get a better picture, you know, head over to our site or Instagram. Um, but on the back here, there is like a little etching of the child, um, some little um, uh, information here, like a little wanted poster um, for the child as well, and a nice little imperial sigil on the back there. So it looks amazing, and I really want it. But do I want it enough to pay 160 pounds? Uh, no, I I just can't. I I cannot. Uh, Think about the money you saved on your uh, Smith's exclusive uh, Mandalorian. True. I mean, true. you saved 15 pounds. So if you put that into like a little account, you might be able. Yeah. To yeah. I see where you're going. So, so you're saying maybe by the year 2040, I could maybe, if maybe you afford it. Smith's errors early enough, and with enough. Yeah. Figures. If only I had employed you as my okay. financial advisor when it, that reveal was made, I would have been quiz in. Ten of those Mandalorians and easily had the money to buy this. After I could have done, yeah. but I do find it despicable that you are um, promoting scalping or reselling in any. Yeah. Heinous fashion here. I don't promote scalping. I only promote market value to individuals who really, really want it and are at the mercy of cutthroat. Uh, well, that scalping. yeah, okay. I, I won't. I won't uh, hold you down on that. Um, Distribution at market price or at a at a at, at a manufacturer suggested price. There we are. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Uh, we've got a few other little bits to get through. Um, I am conscious of time, so I think what we'll do is just have kind of a bit of a quick fire, just rattle through some of these things here. Now, a lot of these things aren't actually figure related; they are on on the broader spectrum, spectrum, spectrum of collectibles. So, I mean, I don't know how you feel about these, but Adidas have launched another um, collaboration with Star Wars. This time, directly focused on the Mandalorian. Now, um, I went to get there. Boba Fett trainers, which came out at the beginning of October. I think they sold out in about 20 seconds. So, wow, thanks a lot. That count, that's me out of the picture. Um, so there is men's, women's, and junior range here, all different styles, which if you head over to our page, you can see them here. So you've got, you know, a Mandalorian one here. You have this one, which is uh, based on the Mudhorn. Um, so do check those out if you are interested. A lot of different styles you can see here, some high-top ones some of their classic um, ones here as well of the child. I think this, this one in particular is actually um, an exclusive for members of Adidas.com. So sticking with the vein of wider pop culture collectibles, we have the Master Watch here and the Razor Crest. Now, I did see um, a, uh, a comment on this um, particular post, which you may have been familiar with. Now, I can't bring up on this um, particular screen here, but I think it read, um, they're missing a golden opportunity to put a compass on this. This is the way, seriously, this is the way. Now, I don't know if you know anything about that post, that caption, but um, what, do you, what do you make of this watch? I, I, I've, I've read it, that snarky comment. Um, He's a bit snarky, yeah, I wasn't too yeah, impressed. I, think what, I actually like this watch. I have no idea how much it costs. I don't even want to know. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do like the watch. Um, I mean, I, I would wear that out. I, I would uh, sport that. 
Um, oh yeah, I, I think it's awesome. So it's, it's a limited edition, only a hundred units uh, oh, made. Um, it definitely counts me out because I can only imagine what the price. Oh, I, I think it was eye-wateringly um, expensive. So as we say, <laughs> yes, we posted this three days ago. Um, so I, I think um, as I posted it, it was like later on that day that it was going to go live. So I'm sure by now, you know, oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of. It's well gone. Yeah, it's one of those things where you're probably watching this thinking, well, what's the point of telling us? Because it's now sold out, so we can't get it anyway. So why bring it up? Why break our hearts? But hey, that's what we're here to do. So um, <laughs> what else have we got to uh, get through today? Mandalorian one. I quickly have a look, quick scroll through. Um, yes, of course. Okay, so um, we did have Mandalorian Friday. So any toy photographers out there watching this video, um, be prepared. Next Friday, again, another Mando Friday um tag us exclude mando um, as you can see in this image here by our very own one six shooter um get yourself involved and we'll spotlight Let's spotlight see. some of your photography um he gets a lot of free publicity off us this one six shooter guy i think i need to have a word with him i need to cut that back a little bit um, <laughs> um so just a few things just just to rattle through before we can bring today to a close so two points so this is one of them um so this is the quarter scale uh, Mandalorian and Child from Hot Toys. Now, just broadly, do you think a quarter scale would ever find its way into your collection? You know, there. I can't see it. I can't see it. I mean, that's to me like the Child at one one scale is tempting enough, just because you know, like that would be fun. But yeah. a one quarter scale. I mean, what is that like? That would be like one and a half feet. I mean, is that? Think, yeah, it's pushing that, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's insane. I like twelve, like a one six scale. To me, is like I have nothing. Like right now, I have nothing to shoot. Like with, like you know, one six scale. Like, yeah. No backgrounds, anything like that. Like yeah, I don't true, know what yeah. I do with one quarter other than put it, like you know, display it. Yeah. And, I mean, at that point, I might as well just get the one six. <laughs> I, I mean, thing, I, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, I hear you definitely. I have no um, idea, what, like, what you could do with that, other than I mean, that's obvious for this for display. So, I mean, I'm I'm not disparaging or you know anyone who buys it. It's just for me personally. I just you know, oh yeah. Again, it goes back to the point. You know, these these figures mean something different to everyone who who picks them up. Um, so, I mean, yeah, Mando Mondays. I don't know who this guy is particularly, um, who sent in this shot. Um, well, I don't really want to give it, one. well, I don't really want to give it any extra publicity, um, that it needs to be, I'm, I'm afraid. So I, I think let's, let's quickly move on. Um, let's, let's, let's move on from what is clearly not Scott's image here on our page, <laughs> exitmagazine.com, scott.blind, check it out. Um, so let's, let's tell you what, let's finish. Where we began today, so this is another image of the oh, My Show Mandalorian, as I say, shared a few days ago by Bluefin Brands in the States. Um, so again, like we said earlier, it is an exclusive. Um, so closing thoughts then on this guy? Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm going to order. I, I mean, seeing these and just it, it makes me want to. Um, but man, a, a guy's got to draw a line somewhere, you know, yep. collectors. I, I, you just can't get everything, um, but it does look good. It yeah. does look really nice. Um, just the level of detail. But then again, like I, I've never come across one of these where the detail um, that on the figure wasn't really well done. Yeah. Um, personally, I think it's that hundred dollar price point that is kind of a, a huge deterrent. I and I think that's you know. from a lot of people that we've seen. Um, commenting you know dming us about it yeah i i think the price point and his exclusive status are the kind of obstacles that this figure has to overcome um it's a shame i wish it was more readily available um personally i desperately want it again that's just because i like to have i collect in blocks i collect mandalorian i collect bounty hunters and so you know it just slots in um but yeah 100 100 dollars you know it's it, it's right it's pricey um so i i guess that's the kind of closing uh, closing remarks i i suppose again i'm sure once i see it in hand i'll be desperate to have it um time will tell um on that one um so i think really that's going to kind of bring us to the end um yeah that is that's going to bring us to the end of um the video again as i say very impromptu 
Um, everything that you've seen today um, is drawn directly from our Instagram. So those of you who perhaps only watch us here on YouTube, who aren't familiar, you know, um, Instagram really is our primary platform. So please do jump over there at Exclude Magazine. You can find um, links to that down in the description as well if you do want to jump across. Um, so I have to say a big thank you to you, Scott. I appreciate all of your thoughts. Um, thank you for having me. But yeah, mate, it's really good just to kind of um, look back. It's crazy to think actually just how much, um, and really we we just we've, we've kind of scraped the surface there. We could spend hours going oh, over yeah. Mandalorian products from the month of October. I mean, something which I I don't have it on the feed, so I couldn't talk about it. Is I think Iron Studios were even teasing a Mandalorian product as well from a statue um, point oh, of view. Okay. So everyone is kind of getting in on it. Um, that's for another time. So a huge thank you to you, Scott, as I say, at Exclude Magazine on Instagram. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, please do, of course, leave a like, drop your thoughts uh, on anything that we've talked about today down in the comments, and please do hit that subscribe um, button just to keep yourself up to date on everything that we're doing here on the Exclude Magazine YouTube. I've been Scott. I've been Scott. Wow, I managed to sneak a blunder in right at the end. <laughs> I've been Jack, and I'll always be Jack. That guy there is Scott. I will be Scott. Um, he'll, yeah, please do be Scott. I'll be Jack. <laughs> um, thank you for watching, everybody, and I'll see you here again very soon. Cheers, guys.